All right, I got my bad mood video out of the way, and I'm now ready to take you to landfall. We're going to be looking at landfall in this video, specifically for Hurricane Michael. I will cover the other weather a little later. Um, so here we go. Now, there's a big difference between the GFS, this is the Euro we're looking at, and then the GFS. The GFS has it hitting Wednesday at 1 a.m. The Euro has it hitting Thursday at 5 a.m. And so that seems like a big discrepancy in the two major models. And I will be doing the majority of my work up until landfall. The sooner, the better. Because I've been a proponent of if you are going to be in the cone... You need to have a plan, you need to be ready, and you need to be prepared. Because the storms have been hitting pretty major this year. And um, so it's almost like the weather's gone up a level. And so it's like I invited people last time that instead of if you're on the coast in the most dangerous areas, if you can, it's probably better to go north. You know, it's like snow day in Texas. Try and consider it a snow day where you and your family go make to a park, to friends, to anywhere that would keep you safe. Because I think you can ask the people in Carolina, if you're going to be without power, even without power for a week or two, do you want to do that? So I just ask everybody to take weather seriously. So now we're looking at all the, like I said, the GFS had it on Thursday. And we'll look at the F3. Has it hitting about Tuesday night? And so, like, we're looking to range it late Tuesday to later Thursday. So that's a pretty big deal. They're taking the main cone anywhere from Louisiana all the way to Florida. Uh, nobody knows for sure at this point, although Cranky Weather Guy is usually the best form of information. I highly recommend following him on Twitter or his blog. Um, but he says, so there's a little update. You can see the environment setup and the basic focus for the system as per impacts. Tomorrow narrows the, narrows the landfall point. That's good news. Monday, when it enters a sweet spot, it finishes up a, the confidence in the organization potential and intensity and games. And um, the very worst they have this thing becoming is a Cat 2. Now... I think if we see the wind shear fall, you could definitely see a Cat 3. But I don't want people to get focused on the hurricane numbers. It might even just be a tropical storm, but it, this thing has potential to do major damage with storm surge and rain potential. Rain kills the most people in a hurricane. It's not the wind. This system produces heavy rains because it has its own primary source. It brings along... But the environment it tracks through is rather poor. Persistent, drier Atlantic fetch. The strong, warm, subsiding high. The atmosphere is a desert there, as far as the tropics are concerned. So, it has dry air to deal with it. And, like I said, there are going to be some variables leading up to it. We had a 6 hour earthquake in the Caribbean, which is kind of where this thing is crossing over. And... The other problem is UL chaos. East Pacific interference will lessen. That will build north as a supportive local ridge as our wild card from east. Our digging trough from west break up the east gulf flow tomorrow. It won't eradicate. It will lessen enough for organization uptick. So, and then here is his preliminary focus map. It would bring a lot of the storm surge, worst storm surge into Destin and Miramar, probably. Um, and so that's why I will be focusing on this to give people a better chance to say that, like, if you are going to be on the right side of the eye wall anywhere on landfall, I would recommend evacuating. I know a lot of people have said, hey, we've been through a lot of hurricanes already. But it seems like, you know, the severe weather monsters are much worse than they used to be. 
Now the euro here is usually good about placement, but bad about rainfall totals. It always undersells and the GFS is better at it. So I usually, and so that, that big spot, right? That is just, I mean, wherever that is going to land, it's going to be a ton of rain. And then it's surprising how powerful the storm maintains or how much power the storm maintains after landfall. So, I mean, Pennsylvania has been flooding a lot this year. So the East Coast doesn't need any more rain. And, well, prepare East Coast because you guys are going to get some. You're going to get a lot. Like I said, that white or orange spot on here is bad. Very bad. So we are in for a wild, wacky weather month for sure. And I'm still, I have a guess we're going to see an 8-0 earthquake this month, or at least another 7.5 or higher. I could be wrong, but it's something to be on the lookout for. Um, and I want to say again that most of the models have it having a pretty strong punch as it exits the East Coast. Now, this thing is going to bring a lot of rain to a lot of areas. So, like here it has landfall about 66 miles an hour. I would bet you 100 bucks right now that the wind gusts will be much higher than that. But we do not know at this point. This has it at about 84 mile per hour wind gusts. The main thing the wind will affect is how much storm surge we get. But the models and predictions usually tend to come out pretty low. And then they get greater as we get closer to the storm. So expect that to continue to be the norm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just But look at all the, look at how much rain there is in the Caribbean I and mean, there's a lot there's there's just a lot of moisture there that is gonna bring a lot of problematic troubles for the people and so we will continue to monitor it like I said they they most don't even think it'll be a hurricane upon landfall and because I put a hurricane in the title, it doesn't mean I definitely 100% think it's going to be a hurricane. Although I, I, I would bet on it. Um, but it is going to bring hurricane level damage, no matter what it is listed as. And, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's my job as your planetary defense commander. That hurricane season doesn't end until the end of November. And it looks like we're going to have more problems down the line. Everybody's like, yay, the Euro is king. Well, the Euro has another hurricane developing. Although from that track model, it doesn't necessarily mean it would affect the United States of America. But I'm saying that I definitely think everybody should be on high alert for another hurricane this month in October. So if you are along the Gulf Coast from Louisiana all the way to I do think Texas is safe but you never know for now but if you are anywhere from Louisiana all the way in to the shaft of Florida y'all need to be prepared I guess the worst case scenario would be that it continues to drift drift east but right now it doesn't look like it's doing that but I'm saying things are so wild things are so wacky and things are so major uh, that it's best to just try and be prepared for anything this is usually the part of the video where I tell you that we all Americans need to come together. Still not strong enough to do that because nobody's really listening. I mean, you guys are, but the weather ain't going to calm down anytime soon, bro. I mean, I have a theory at Thor News when the sun acts weird, the weather acts weird and people act weird. And that, that theory looks like a fact almost. And so we just had that giant coronal hole pass us. So Earth is just now, I think, or will be in a day or two starting to get slammed with the solar weather or the solar wind so everything is going to be more interesting this week and that interesting thing won't stop until who knows oh another thing last night i was looking out and sirius the star was freaking out unlike i've ever seen it oh that was pretty fascinating um because 
I guess if the stars act weird, then the sun acts weird, and then earth weather acts weird. But I have to put more data into that theory. But definitely the auroras haven't taken a break in over three or four months. With or without coronal holes, they have still been kicking. I'm guessing because our magnetic shield is magnetic shield is kind of low. Because crazy things are going on in the solar system. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. And I appreciate the fact that you, you put up with me to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I will talk to you guys in the near future. I'm going to talk about the storm way too much. Because it's what I do. Peace out. Stay cool. And I'm definitely going to try and refine my sense of humor. And I miss being funny. <laughs>